All right, so we're recording. Welcome everybody to the Special Education PLC. This is our second session. My name is Pat Keyes. I am the Special Projects Coordinator for the Office of Sustainability. And uh, this session is specifically focusing on sustainability and nutrition. Um, so just to give you a little more background about where this group came from, we host a lot of events in our office and folks uh, over the last couple of years have been requesting to have a space for special educators to come together to share ideas, best practices. So this space is us creating that. Um, this session we opened up to general education audience as well because we thought there were a lot of connections to schools who had gardens, etc. cetera. Um, so welcome to all of you. We are, with sessions moving forward, probably only gonna have more of a special education uh, focus. Again, just honoring that this was intended to be a space for that audience. But just to give you an idea of what we're gonna be talking about today, I'm just gonna run through a few things that our office does. I'm gonna turn things over to Sophia Leon, who's here from Grow NYC School Gardens. She's gonna talk about their root camp curriculum. Uh, she'll answer any questions, and then we'll turn things over to Alana O'Donnell, who is has been helping me in planning the last couple sessions. Uh, she's also gonna answer questions. We'll go into great breakout groups to think about how we can adapt what we've learned today to our soup populations. We'll share those out and then we'll have a quick closing. Uh, so who is the Office of Sustainability? This is us. I'm joined behind the scenes too by my colleague, Peter Barker. He's one of our sustainability specialists. Uh, but our office helps out in a variety of ways schools with sustainability initiatives, whether it's waste management, uh, solar installations on school buildings, energy efficiency. We host a lot of trainings. Uh, I organize a youth climate summit every spring. One great resource that I want to plug is our resource portal. So specifically, uh, these tabs you might want to familiarize yourself with our trainings, our programs, our partners. We work with a ton of partners in the city, including Grow NYC who's here today. And then our topics page is resources and materials that you can use in the classroom. So definitely check that out. Um, and Peter will put the link to the resource portal in the chat. As I mentioned earlier, this space is um, really for us to create community. So if you're able to turn on your camera, please do so. Uh, we want to use the space to share expect expertise, adapt resources to our populations, and build communities. So two things that we're going to be talking about in the great breakout groups that I'd like you to keep in mind as you hear from Sophia and Alana is thinking about how you can adopt, excuse me, adapt what you're hearing today to your student populations, and then what existing resources can you use to supplement this program. So whether you have a garden at your school, Alana is going to talk about her cooking space, but not every school might have that. So how can you adapt it to what you do have in your school? Uh, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Sophia. Sophia is the Nutrition Education Coordinator for Grow NYC School Gardens, and she's going to talk to us about the boot camp curriculum. Sophia, thanks for being here. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be able to share um this curriculum with you all great so welcome to our root camp orientation so my name is sophia leon i'm the nutrition education coordinator at grow nyc and if you have any questions throughout my presentation uh, just be sure to put them in the chat and we will get to them at the end so just a little bit about uh, my organization, Grow NYC. We are a nonprofit that helps protect the environment, create green spaces, help people stay healthy throughout the city and give them opportunity to make a positive impact. And we do this mainly through uh, four different areas, which is in conservation, education, green spaces, and in food access and agriculture. You may know us um, by our green markets that we run throughout the city, including the Union Square Green Market. Um, my team, the School Gardens team specifically, works to inspire, facilitate, and promote the creation of sustainable school gardens. Um, and so far, 
uh, the number of school gardens that we have helped uh, either create or work with is 864. Um, and I know that some of you are from schools that are on this list. And if you're not, uh, be sure to reach out. We host workshops such as this. Um, we offer technical support and this is over phone, Zoom, email. We have giveaways and pr uh, provide funding opportunities or can link you with funding opportunities to uh, create a school garden. Uh, as well, we have a distance learning site with lots of uh, different resources, and I will be sure to put that link in the chat as well. And these are just a few of our uh, common questions that we get for technical assistance um, and our email address, schoolgardens at grownyc.org, if you have any questions or are just interested in getting more involved here. So in this workshop, we're gonna be talking about what exactly is the root camp curriculum? How can you teach root camp? What you need to get started? And we'll leave a lot of time for questions and answers. And of course, being the special education PLC, um, I'm going to be talking about root camp kind of in a general sense, but a lot of it will be tailored towards special education. And Alana presenting after me uh, will specifically discuss how to tailor it um, to a special education population. So what is root camp? It is a curriculum comprised of 10 45 minute lessons around the connection between food and well-being, food justice, criteria for making decisions, and the rationale for shopping locally and in season. And the lessons introduce a series of discussion questions and relevant vocabulary designed to facilitate conversation and a written brainstorm activity. The second half of every lesson is unique in that it encourages children to utilize their hands as their most versatile tool uh, through cooking activities in every lesson of the 10 lessons. Um, so this curriculum was actually developed by another group, not by Grow NYC, by Ample Table for Everyone, which is a nonprofit organization that is working to fund solutions to feed a growing population of food insecure families around the city. And we are working with them to help them push out their curriculum. So like I said before, it is a 10 lesson curriculum and it has a one uh, once per week recommended pacing. However, what I really like about Root Camp is that it's very flexible, as we'll talk about throughout this whole presentation. Um, if you wanted to teach it once every two weeks, that would be totally fine. There's really um, no restrictions as long as it is done within the calendar year. Um, and like I said, so it's geared towards middle schoolers, but it is also easily adaptable for both older or younger stu students. And um, I will talk about that in our example lesson. So one of the lessons is the role of sweet and salty. And in this lesson, uh, you discuss why foods are, um, you know, why sweet and salty foods are really appealing um, and maybe how you can uh, enjoy them, but maybe in moderation. So this is an example inquiry from the role of sweet and salty lesson. Some of the questions that you would discuss with your class are, why do humans crave sugary or sweet foods? Why do food makers and people add salts and sugar to foods? And you would read through some food labels with your class and talk about the ingredients in them. So some of the goals of the root camp curriculum are really that it is about food awareness, um, about the information and understanding of nutrition, food systems, and how these food choices affect health and the environment, especially since um, it is aimed at that upper elementary middle school age. Um, it is supposed to be a roadmap for making strong, informed, and healthy choices as children enter into the new phase of independence and self-awareness. And the overriding principles of the root camp curriculum um, by Ample Table are that all living creatures eat and drink daily, that there is a direct relationship between food, health, and mood, that feeding oneself, one's family, and one's community are essential life skills, and that there are techniques for eating healthily and affordably. And so you can see in the lessons, whether it be in the inquiry or in the discussion questions uh, that are provided with each lesson, how these principles are affecting and influencing the curriculum. 
some of the goals of the root camp curriculum are to begin or increase helping at home with food prep to actively participate in making decisions about their food intake um, for students to seek out their elders who can share traditions and pass on family recipes how to understand and look forward to preparing and sharing food and how different cultures are expressed through food which is very important especially in new york city and the curriculum also provides uh, lots of extra resources it is more of a nutrition education focused curriculum so if you as the educator are more interested in learning uh, more if you, you yourself want to know more there are nutrition science guidelines uh, food tips and specific food guidelines there's uh, organizations and youtube videos so it provides really the whole a whole plethora of information if if you want to know more so now that we've discussed what root camp is and the overriding principles behind it i'm going to talk about teaching root camp. So each class has the same format, which is a five minute do now, um, where you're reviewing the homework and usually a brief activity. There's a 10 to 15 minute inquiry session where you introduce the lesson, information, questions, and vocabulary. Uh, the third part is the hands-on activity, and this is the food prep activity that is supposed to take about 20 to 25 minutes per class. And lastly, there is a five minute review of the handout and homework for next class. So I'm gonna walk you through lesson one, which is orientation to root camp. This is the do now for orientation to root camp. Where am I and where am I going? It has a few yes or no questions such as, I know how to read a food label. Um, I know how to and often set the table. I know what and where a farmer's market is as well as some questions such as name five fruits, name five vegetables, and um, the students will fill out the same form at the end of root camp and you can compare to see how they have learned and grown throughout root camp. So in the inquiry for lesson one, some of the vocabulary words include root, biology, mood, and recipe. And some of the inquiry questions for lesson one are what does everything, every living thing need to survive? And besides survival, what else do we use food for? And they also have talking points such as the quality and quantity of food, of, of the food we eat affects our health and therefore our lives. Um, really just aiming to generate conversation in your classroom. This is the hands-on activity in the first lesson and it is apple wraps. We'll be getting an example of this later on today. Um, but it, all of the hands-on activities for the classes are aimed to be uh, pretty um, doable within, you know, the 20 to 25 minute period and are not super challenging. The curriculum also provides a at-home activity, which is a little bit of a more complex recipe. Um, like I said, there's the in-class recipe and the take-home recipe. And the take home recipe will always be a little bit uh, more in depth. And last but not least for lesson one, we have the you do handout, which is uh, to give to students to take home. So this prepares them for the next lesson. We're talking about defining nutrition, what improves your nutrition, who prepares your food, and it gives the students some facts and considerations to take forward within the week that they might not be thinking about root camp. And a bit of a lesson overview of the 10 lessons. We start with lesson one, orientation. We move on to lesson two, which is nourishment. What is it? We talk about why do we eat? How does food affect us, both physically and mentally? Lesson three is called balancing meals, timing, portion size, and food groups. And this uh, talks about reading food labels, what is a high and low quality food, the different food groups. I know in this lesson, um, they talk about my plate and uh, the food pyramid, which is the older version of my plate. Lesson four is the role of sweet and salty, as I discussed earlier. Why are most snack foods either salty and crunchy or sweet and creamy? Uh, lesson number five is why am I thirsty? The role of water in the diet. Lesson six, is there a diet for humans? 
Lesson seven is eat a rainbow. And what are the benefits of eating a diet full of color? Lesson eight is how does our environment affect our diet? And this lesson is really interesting. It starts to uh, include the, some ideas about food marketing, especially to children um, and making just some connections there about maybe what they're seeing on TV. Lesson nine is meals for all seasons. Uh, so talking about eating seasonally. And lesson 10 is express yourself through your food. Um, really honing in on how each and every one of us connects differently with food and family history and culture affects how and what we eat. So enjoying the diversity of the foods around you. So now that we've talked about what root camp is and exactly how the lessons go, uh, we're going to discuss the necessary equipment you need and how to get started with root camp. So one so Grow and will provide one set of basic kitchen tools per school teaching root camp. Um, and this is two sets of these kid safe knives and then one set of these kitchen tools that are in black in the middle and two sets of three plastic cutting boards. So per each school teaching root camp, no matter how many classes you have, we will provide one set of kitchen tools. And then we will provide, at the end of the curriculum, a $75 stipend per class to purchase food for root camp. Um, so just to reiterate, we will ship cooking materials to your school. And this is one set of classroom cooking materials per school. And we will send a 75, one $75 snack check at the end of the program once a teacher completes a final evaluation. And this is one snack check per class. So one set of materials per school, one snack check per class. And your next steps, if you're interested in teaching root camp, are to officially sign up. You fill out this form. We will send this link after this presentation. And it is just supply signup.paperform.co. Um, and this is really important. If multiple classes in your school are teaching it, if you know all of the participating teachers' names, you can fill out one of these forms per school. But if you're not sure and um, you just want to do it yourself, it's okay to do one per teacher. Um, and this is so that we have all of the correct addresses and names for sending um, the snack checks at the end of the program. So I will show you this supply sign up form now. So very simple, you have your school name, your school number, and how many classes in your school are teaching root camp. If you're not sure, just sign up for one, just sign up for yourself. But if you are the designated, you know, root camp ambassador, then you can put down the full number of classes. This is which address should we send cooking supplies to? So this will be the school. And then where and to whom should we send snack checks to? name and address. So this is who we are addressing the checks to. So if more than one person wants a snack check, then you would fill it out like Sophia, um, one, two, three, place. Um, and then, you know, Pat, four, five, six. So you can put multiple there, or if you are only are sure of yourself, you can just put your own information. And then if your school already has the cooking supplies and you would like to opt out of receiving cooking supplies so that we can provide this curriculum to more classrooms, you can opt out. Okay. So um, at the end of this presentation, you will receive an email with the recording and a copy of the curriculum. And are there any questions for me now? I see that there are some questions in the chat. Yeah, I was compiling a couple. If I could uh, bring those up and then we'll invite anybody to unmute or, pop or just type in the chat. Okay. Um, okay, so Amy asked, do we have access to the lessons? Some of these came up, your answers during the thing, but if you could just reiterate. Yep, so, so after this presentation, we will be sending you the curriculum um, so you can take a better look at it before you decide to sign up. Okay, and this was more of a concern that I think would be good to discuss the breakout groups, but Margaret said, I don't feel secure about having students handle food in the middle school classroom. 
Um, so any thoughts on how we could adapt it? Yeah, so um, firstly, this is a great uh, point to talk about in the breakout room. We've done multiple uh, different forms of nutrition education in middle school and younger um, with even having, you know, third grade classes cooking with plastic knives. Um, and it really is impressive and kind of surprising sometimes it might be uh, how capable how capable they can be. However, um, you know, the new root camp curriculum has a lot of information section and a lot of um, parts of it that aren't the cooking demo. So some of maybe you'll feel comfortable doing some of the recipes and not others. Um, and you could always adapt them if you feel like maybe you aren't comfortable with certain steps in the recipe. Um, I would say it's highly adaptable. Yeah, an idea that pops into my head too is if you have a green team, if this is something you would want to do with them after school or send home with students, they can do it at home. Definitely. It's um, definitely available as a kind of after school club if you're interested in just pulling a few students for a more manageable group as well. People ask here um, Are all the supplies provided for us, or do we have to purchase all the food? I know you talked about this too, but if you could reiterate. Yep. So the cooking supplies are, su are given to you, they'll be sent to your school. And then for the food, you will receive a stipend, but you will have to purchase the food by yourself. Um, just, yeah. But we can, of course, give recommendations on kind of where we would suggest you might buy some um, and how to, you know, make the most of your money there. Sophia, could I just clarify that stipend that they're getting? It's, so mm -hmm. it's $75, like you said, it's $75 per class. So if they're mm -hmm. doing it with two classes, that's $150, correct? Yes. Okay, that's, I think that was someone's question. So if you're doing it with multiple classes, you get, you get more than $75. Um, and they, they are saying if it costs more than $75 or more than that stipend per class, then they are on our, their own. So I think the answer there would be yes, you would have to cover if you go over the amount that Grow NYC is allowed to provide for a stipend. Yeah, so we've, um, you know, looked at the curriculum a fair amount and kind of uh, laid out how much it should be. And $75 uh, really should be able to cover a lot of um, what you're getting here. So we'd be happy to work with you um, to be able to budget that with your school. And also, um, you can save your apples if students donate your apples, if they donate their uh, carrots and celery, um, things like that, that come with lunch, et cetera. True. And we're going to hear from Alana up next about how she's been adapting it in her classroom. So I'm looking forward to that. I think that's most of the questions in the chat, right, Pat? I don't think we're I believe so. Yeah, there were some comments, but if uh, we didn't get to your question, you could just unmute or pop it in the chat now. That'd be great. Yep, and I'll, I think when uh, you all see this curriculum later, you'll see that it's, it's fairly straightforward, um, and we're happy to answer any questions and provide support throughout the program. Just something Jonathan brings up. It's not a question, but it's just a great piece of insight for people. Is that uh, they're using the Office of Wellness's cooking program right now, but they're not having the kids cooking because of COVID restrictions. But they're learning related skills. So today, for example, they were learning about five different herbs and bundling them and bringing them home in a paper bag. So great to think about like how we can adapt this during COVID, or even if we end up remote, uh, depending on what happens with new variants. Sorry, yeah, those, back, those are elementary students. Okay, great. Thank you. And then Eloisa is asking what grades, Sophia, this is uh, directed initially towards middle school, right? But it's adaptable to 
Mm -hmm. It's di directed towards upper elementary and middle school, um, but like we said, it's adaptable. Um, specifically, I think it could be adapted for younger students very well. All right, well, if there are no other questions, we're going to go ahead and learn, uh, turn things over to Alana O'Donnell. Uh, Alana has been helping me with the planning for these special education sessions. She's a special education teacher at the Brooklyn Occupational Training Center. She's currently using the root camp curriculum and she's going to walk us through a lesson that she's done with it. So Alana, if you're, if you're able to uh, screen um, share. I just need Sophia to stop sharing. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay, let's see. Let's try this. And dear, okay. So weird seeing my face up there. <laughs> so hi, everybody. My name is Alana O'Donnell. I am a teacher at the Brooklyn Occupational Training Center, 721K here in Gravesend, Brooklyn. And we just completed week two of root camp, um, but we're going to focus on week one because that was <laughs> where you'll get to see a, a little video, um, a, the lesson, how I adapted it for District 75. Um, and my kids are cooking. Like my kids are hands-on. Um, I, I recognize that there are COVID restrictions and get it 100%, um, but we're making it work. So let's get cooking with apple wraps. So what I did was I laid out options for my students. Um, I just have to move my face a little bit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, asking them the question, what ingredients do we need? Circle it. So it's an interactive board. So they're coming up, it's a pear deck. They're coming up to the board. They're telling me what we needed. Uh, spaghetti, obviously, totally didn't need that. But uh, I also wanted to kind of see where their, where their thinking processes was because we talked about using peanut butter. We talked about using... Um, applesauce, we talked about using jam, and we chose to use avocado as a group. So we voted during the week. Everybody was in agreement about avocado, which was rather shocking, and I saw them on sale, so we grabbed the avocado. Uh, cinnamon and whole wheat tortilla. Now, unfortunately for me, but fortunately for the students, there were no whole wheat tortillas to be found in half of Queens. So we went with pita bread. And I explained that to the students uh, the next day. So again, I try to add something that is completely out of its element, but something that they are very familiar with. Um, and this happens to be potato chips. <laughs> I find that the more we talk about things that are that not necessarily things that are unhealthy once in a blue moon of course we're all going to have potato chips and you know whatever but every day i am looking in lunch bags going are you kidding me six pieces of cake four bags of potato chips we got to reel this in mom so i try to include something that is very familiar in their own lunch bags when I'm creating these modified lessons. So we also used um, our apples and our bananas. And one of my wonderful guys got up and was like, we're not using potato chips and circled the potato chips. Obviously we have to determine what materials we need to complete our task. So one of the big things too that I wanted to stress is trying to use pictures of real life items Using cartoonish or um, that non-realistic looking knife or non-realistic looking cutting board sometimes causes confusion about what the object actually is within a District 75 classroom. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm sure even in real life, I mean, I've made the mistake, <laughs> but I threw the snowblower in because hopefully we can make it till uh, December 23rd without a snowstorm. That's <laughs> um, a game plan here. So my students are very familiar with measuring spoons, measuring cups, butter knife, plates, and I invested early on in um, Dollar Tree um, butter knives, and I've had them for years, and they work effectively. Even if you're cutting through steak, it's just a sawing motion. It's teaching a student a life skill. It's teaching a student some fine motor stuff. Um, so you can make it work. Uh, even if it's just you doing it. This is always my favorite part of the lesson, of our, our lessons, because we do step-by-step -step instruction. So my kids know step one, and um, again, I'm going to show you a little video of them shouting out the, their responses. Many of my students can't are not readers, so they see the picture. It's a real life picture. Somebody's washing their hands. They know that is always the first thing that they're going to do. Step two usually involves us preheating an oven. So when we were creating this, somebody said preheat. I was like, oh, wow. I was pretty impressed with them that they remembered. But I was like, no, we're totally not doing that. <laughs> um, so we have to wash our apples. We're cutting our apples in half, removing any stems and seeds. One of the things I've noticed is that my kids will, um, they get nervous about the seeds. Um, I've had students uh, ask me if they're going to grow a tree in their belly, um, which, you know, I think every kid asks that question. I also have a student who loves to read half as one slash two. So that's why you see it written out as half as well, because one slash two makes sense to him. It that might not make sense to another student in the class. Why does it do that? Okay. Cut apple slices. And um, again, we, in our, in our video, we use the apple core and slicer. So you'll get to see the kids doing that. Sprinkle your apples with cinnamon. Step again, step six, peel the banana. We have some interesting video of what went on with the banana and the chaos that ensued. <laughs> Smash the banana. And again, this is, my students are 16 and 17 years old. So if you're teaching kindergarten, this is going to work for you guys. If you're teaching middle school, this particular type of lesson, it's not necessarily going to work for you, but you can make it your own and make it unique to your students. If you're teaching District 75, this might work for your group. Chop the avocado. Smash the avocado. That's always fun, smashing it all up. Mix the banana and avocado. Spread your banana, excuse me, an avocado mixture on your tortilla. Add your apple slices. There were no, and I said this when we were, um, we met this week, I could not find an apple tortilla with and a tortilla with any fruit or vegetables sticking out other than this chicken fajita. So <laughs> bear with the picture. Um, roll the tortilla and cut it in half again. So we've got math, we've got science, we've got ELA, we've got social emotional, all in a 15 page uh, pear deck so far. When you get to the point when they're eating, they know step 15 or 16 or 25, whatever step it is, the last step is always eating and enjoying. And sharing it with their families is key. So what we did was we wrapped up our extras and we sent them home. I always ask parents for Tupperware at the beginning of the school year so that 
not only do they get to see pictures and video, they get to taste what their kid made in school as well. And it, it's not just homework, it becomes like a critique. So I've had parents write back, can we not use that? It was gross. Or can we try this? It was good. But um, for this one, everyone was impressed, impressed and kind of weirded out by the avocado and banana mash, which is fine. I get it. I, I'm a texture person. A lot of my kids are texture people. So, but we, we, we tested it out. So we kind of go into a little review here. What fruits did we add to our wraps? So the students have a selection, A, B, C, or D. Um, depending upon the group, again, you might need to do two. You might need to have pictures up there. With Pear Deck, you have that luxury of adding a picture next to um, the, the uh, words, um, exposing them to as much uh, vocabulary as possible is a great thing. What spice did we use on our wrap? Cinnamon, my students have been exposed to cinnamon and cinnamon sticks now for a while, so they have some experience with that. And we go back here to be inclusive for our students that um, are not able to make a decision on A, B, C, or D. Come up to the board, let's circle what healthy food, what other healthy foods can we put on our wrap? And of course, everyone was very excited to put McDonald's french fries and lettuce on their wrap. <laughs> now, we, uh, we had some winners on this, but um, did you think this was a difficult recipe? Come on up to the board and write your answer. And again, I got a line. I got a yes. I got a no. I got a circle. So some of my, that's how some of my students respond. And that's cool. That's okay. I know by their reaction, by how, if, how, how excited they were to eat it and how, or how like, oh, their faces were when they actually ate it. So this is a snapshot of Y53 in action. Okay. I'm going to press play, but I'm going to start. Okay. We're going to start at the beginning. So. I'm going to just kind of flip through a little bit. No. Let me get, I wanted a specific time frame here. So. What is this, Stephanie? An avocado? What? Girl, look at you go. All right. Do we need spaghetti and meatballs? Yes or no? <laughs> Andy went no. Cascada, yes or no? No, we're not going to use avocado. Uh, and I meant what to say, this thing? what is this? Cinnamon. Are we going to use a little cinnamon? We are. Let's go to the cabinet and get some chips. But what about this thing? What is this? Bananas, let's do the banana dance. Bananas, bananas. Stephanie, give me the banana dance. Stand up. Give me the banana. Bananas, 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 bananas. Okay, sit down. All right, okay. These are some of the okay, items so that we just fast forwarding. Look, you're going to break this. You can focus on the stand up. Okay. You're just going to open it, just like that, and you're going to open it. So, Casper, open yours up. These are going to be a little bit less like <laughs> and more like stuff. So the, so, the idea that it was a wrap, I had to kind of adapt overnight because I didn't have wraps, but it worked just as nicely. I'm just going to go ahead and skip a little bit so I can get to. Um, a uh, specific thing that I wanted everyone to get to see. I think it's the banana. Yeah. So you can see. Oh, okay, Stephanie, here's a banana for you. Andy, would you like a banana? Casper, do you like a banana? Smelling it through our mask. Want a banana? Yeah, a banana. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, so let's peel our banana, guys. Peel our banana. Let's peel our banana. Man, sometimes peeling a banana means you gotta have super strength. Andy's eating it. Hold on, Andy. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, we just went in for it. We Let's just ate it. It's so good. I want to eat mine too. Okay, so that is just some of the like the chaos ensued because I couldn't open the banana. Stephanie couldn't open the banana, banana, but Andy went ahead and started eating his banana. So these things are going to happen, and I just I always try to kind of make light of it and move on. Andy, you stand up. It's I'm not going to let me advance. I think okay. So then we created an exit ticket. My colleague, um, Courtney Dill here at 721, created an exit ticket. And yes, they look pretty much identical, except for some of her students. She can only give them one other option to choose from. And I can give some of my students that two options or three options. So it can get confusing. It can get challenging. But at the end of the day, it's a good laugh. The kids are super interactive, as you can see. And I know you could hear my, my big guy in the background giggling um, because he he can't be, he can't be on camera. But uh, so far, so good. I've adapted it to make it our own. Uh, I continue to adapt the lesson plans to make them our own. You're due now. And again, you're do now, do what you can do in the moment and, and go from there. I think that's all I have. I hope that that was informative for you guys. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Alana. Sure. I especially uh, appreciate the video, right? Like in an ideal world, you're like, and the classroom is quiet and everybody's oh, yeah. cleanly. <laughs> Yeah. their task and that's never the reality right so Glo planning. gloves came off they, yep. you know i'm trying to keep my mask up and you know i get it like guys this is like, we're in crazy times and the having the luxury of having a space where i can teach my students how to maintain a healthy lifestyle or encourage them to have a have a healthy lifestyle you know we have a full working kitchen at 721k we have a pretty large garden at 721k um but while we were all remote my kids were growing vegetables out of their sneakers my kids were growing vegetables out of old boxes you know and being successful at it so you can make it work it's fun you'll have a good laugh and you know you'll be proud of them you'll be proud of them so uh, a couple questions came into the chat while you were presenting um did you joshua asked if you had to send home a permission slip initially Alana. yes all of my, we have them already for um for like photo release and video and we also sent one home just informing parents that this is what we were going to be doing does anybody have any food restrictions i have a student who has no um no milk no dairy and that was really it but you know are you making things with chocolate please don't give my kid chocolate because they'll be bouncing off the walls no I don't, we're not making anything with chocolate. <laughs> so that, those are special days, which I, you know, send home stuff for that. But um, that was the extent of the, you know, I always like to keep that on file just for myself. And a similar comment slash question from Kelly that Alana or Sophia, you might be able to answer. She said, I assume uh, peanut butter is not recommended. And if so, would there be enough, some, substitute like sunflower butter 
apple butter you can use you can use um we used avocado that was suggested by uh, grow nyc in the everything is suggested in the lesson plans by grow nyc which eliminates like any guessing game kelly like that was the cool thing like i i was like i want my kids to try avocado i'm like and, and i put i kind of pushed it in my own unique way like guys i'm like has anybody ever had this like look at the inside of it it's green it's like i, I don't know i think it's a kermit like you know i tried to really so when we voted it was like oh yeah we're gonna try that and i think they just liked the word to be honest because it was like a new word <laughs> and um you know like we actually make our own we've made our own butter my class um so they were like yeah we've been there done that so let's tr let's try something else but yeah the in the lesson plans that are provided by root camp they give you a list of different things to substitute for peanut butter Did anybody else have any questions? If you could unmute or put them in the chat. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much, Alana and Sophia. Uh, I'm just gonna screen share again real quick just so I can explain the breakout groups. So we're gonna spend about uh, 10 minutes in groups. We are going to self-select. So once I launch, you'll have the option to choose your breakout group. Is there anything that stood out to people that um, someone shared with them that they'd like to share? You can feel free to just unmute yourself or put it in the chat. Uh, I was just going to say my group, you just talked about how it can integrate really well into a green team of students and, and using the nutrition as, a, as one of the foci, foci in, instead of, you know, kind of being overwhelmed with, with, with lots of different ideas and gardens and composting. I mean, it could, it could really easily integrate and then kids can help out sort of promoting the program and, and helping the younger students, uh, we said, with like learning some of the skills so you know that's what i'm going to try to do that with my fourth graders great yeah this could even serve as like the snack basis maybe for your your green team if you guys are having snacks in there okay <clears throat> okay lauren also said it'd be great to do with my green team as an after school program that can turn key to the younger students love that Does anybody else want to share? Pat, I just wanted to mention that um, I was in my group, um, our local high school, which is right behind ours, um, John Dewey was talking about um, like our garden and also 811X, which if a shout out to them, if we can find it, they have an amazing like documentary about their um, school garden and their um farmer's market um and if you guys look for it i don't know if um orlean i believe if i'm saying that correctly maybe yes. your principal or your ap might have that um mm -hmm. it would be amazing for people to see what you guys are doing up at 811 um that would be really really cool and we also were talking about composting and hydroponics so getting involved in that is really important too. So just some of the things that we were talking about over at um, six through 12. <laughs> Thank you, Alana. I, um, I know we have it on file in our, probably it's out there in our Instagram. Or I, I, right now I just don't have the link, but yeah, definitely we have some videos out there that uh, showcasing what we have in the garden and the farmer's market program that we have as well. Thank you for sharing that. All right, did anybody else wanna share anything before I wrap things up? I can just briefly, briefly share on behalf of the group I was with. Um, sure. uh, folks are sharing similar uh, similar sentiments, excited to work with their, their pre-existing green teams or, or clubs. 
um, tapping into student groups that are meeting during their lunch periods because it's a nice way to to, to supplement, especially with a, a food a food program. Um, one one person, Josh Blum over here, did mention that he was able to get some swag from the Zero Waste Schools website, and he's excited to share that with his green team um, to give them uniforms for potentially for cooking. Um, so that and we can share that link afterwards. I so just wanted to make note of that um, T-shirts and, and bags for folks for for the students. Um, I think that was it. Some folks shared some concerns about how they're going to make it work within their own space because space is limited. Um, but yeah, I think people are ready to make it work. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And yep, Lauren's sharing. She made aprons and t-shirts for her green team, right? Yeah, good to have that kind of sense of shared community with, with those ideas. Um, great. Well, thank you again to Alana and Sophia for sharing today. If you want to give them a little love in the chat, feel free to give them a shout or a clap or something. Thanks everyone for joining us today and especially to Alana for her great presentation. It was, I loved watching that video. Thanks guys. Thanks Sophia. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to, since we're talking about resources, spend a couple minutes talking about some upcoming things we have. Hopefully you can join. So the first of which is the New York City Solar Schools Education Program. It's a free program. We do it in partnership with an organization called Solar One, and it's for educators grades three through 12. And they do actually open up to younger grades. They just, with the understanding that you may have to adapt some things slightly. Um, you can also earn up to 10 CTLE credits throughout the school year. So go ahead, uh, if you're interested in that, you can find more, we'll put the link in the chat. Find out more info. Our Future, this is a music program for high school students. So we partner with an organization called Clean Green Music Machine. And students create a song and a video with a sustainability and social justice theme. And it's open to all student populations uh, we had both the D75 student and three English language learners last year. So definitely encourage you to share this with your music teachers. It's closing the application next uh, week on the 23rd. So definitely pass that along to any students or um, music teachers at your school. The students have to be nominated by an educator at the school and you have to submit a video, kind of like an audition. We are having a partner engagement forum. We had one this week on Tuesday. Um, we had breakout groups for that that went a lot smoother. <laughs> so I'll have to figure out what happened with ours again. Sorry about that. But we're offering another uh, partner engagement session on January 20th from 1 to 2.15. So we're going to have 17 or 18 partners with us that day. Their uh, icons are up on the screen, their logos. And you'll have the chance to meet with two of them for two 30-minute breakout sessions. And they're just talking about how they can support your school with grants, resources, curriculum, etc. And then in terms of carrying on the work we're doing here, um, we have a shared Google Drive folder that has resources from our last session, which was on sustainability and art. And then we'll have all the materials from today as well. There's also a contact info sheet. So if you heard an idea uh, and you want to share your contact info with others, feel free to do it on that sheet. These are all in one folder that we're going to share in the link. Um, also, if you were still planning future sessions, so if you have an idea, please shoot me an email. My email's on the screen and I'll put it in the chat as well. And then if there's any high school educators here, uh, if you could stay on for one second, we will email the slides and links. Yep, and they will be in that folder that we're sharing. Um, if there's any high school educators here, I have a random miscellaneous question up for you about our upcoming Youth Climate Summit. Just looking for like an opinion, literally two minutes if you have it. Otherwise, um, thank you for joining everybody and hope to see you next time.